So we're going to kind of flip the table here a little bit. Back in uh, the 1980s when I was training as a urologist, we used to do brachytherapy where we would put permanent implants in the prostate and we used to work with what we called low dose energies. We used to use radioactive iodine. And the way we would get those seeds, those radioactive seeds in the prostate was by doing an open incision and we would have a needle applicator, it was called the MIC applicator. And um, I think you still use it. <laughs> and uh, the MIC applicator, what we do is we would actually open up the abdomen, expose the prostate by actually cutting down some of the ligaments to move the prostate away from the pubic bone. And then we would manually put the MIC applicator in the prostate several times to, d to just implant the seeds. And we did it just basically by feel. And we used to think we were doing a great job. And obviously we weren't, as you look at the data, subsequent to that time because you know the one downside of the low dose rate brachytherapy was that you would have cold areas and what does that mean? It means that when you use a low dose energy the sphere of conduction of the energy is limited. It can only go so far into the tissue so if you have seeds that are too far apart you have spaces between that are cold or not treated with enough energy and if it doesn't get enough energy then if there's prostate cancer in that region it's not going to get treated. And so we had a significant number of failure rates with the low dose rate brachytherapies done by the manual technique that we were doing back in the early to mid 80s. Uh, and subsequent technologies developed where we did ultrasound guided placement of low dose rate uh, seeds using either iodine or radioactive palladium, which is a little bit of a higher energy for what we thought was better for higher grade disease. And that's our knowledge as urologists. Um, I've had the good fortune uh, to work with Dr. Krauss at Beaumont and where we work in tandem where we do a procedure called high dose rate brachytherapy uh, which I think has really been a real major advance in urology and I, I thought I'd have you talk a little bit about high dose rate and why it's in your view it's superior to low dose rate and actually how it compares to low dose rate. Yeah, so um, low dose rate as Dr. Lutz described was was around first and it started with open implants. Uh, nobody does open prostate brachytherapy anymore. It's typically done uh, under transrectal ultrasound guidance and it's a transperineal needle implant so the needles go in through the skin so behind the scrotum in front of the rectum they're guided up into the prostate um, and then the radioactive seeds are then dropped in the prostate at you know, hopefully very precise locations to avoid any of those cold areas, but also to avoid any uh, treating any areas too extensively where you run the risk of, of causing a complication. Um, going back about 25 years, this predates me, I came to Beaumont in 2000, so this is about seven, eight years before I arrived. Um, one of my predecessors in the department, our former department chair, um, began uh, a protocol for very, men with very high risk prostate cancer, combining a short course of the external beam, basically one month of external beam treatment to the prostate and pelvic lymph nodes instead of the two months that would be more typical with uh, high dose rate brachytherapy. Now high dose rate brachytherapy differs from the low dose rate brachytherapy or the permanent seeds in one major way. The way we get the sources in there are very similar. It's the transperineal needle implant like I just described. But instead of loading it with seeds and dropping radioactive material and leaving it in the prostate, those needles are connected to a machine called an afterloader. The afterloader houses a single radioactive source. It's a little tiny metal encapsulated seed. It's about half the size of a grain of rice. Uh, the isotope is iridium-192 very different than properties than, than what we would leave inside of someone for, for a permanent seed implant. Namely, the energy is uh, over 10 times greater and the dose rate is so much higher that instead of taking many months to deposit the dose of radiation, which is where you get the term low dose rate, this takes minutes, hence the term high dose rate. So once we have our needles implanted in the prostate, they're connected to this machine, and then this source, which is attached to the end of a flexible cable, is automatically fed through each of these needles. It stops and dwells for very precise amounts of time, 
at exact positions along each needle tract such that it delivers a very tightly conformal dose of radiation to the entire prostate. Depending on the size of the prostate, the number of needles used for the implant, uh, the age of the source, uh, um, its overall activity, usually the treatment takes between 15 and 25 minutes to deliver, at which point the source is removed. Then the needles are removed. Patient goes up to recovery, he goes home, he's not radioactive, uh, the treatment is done. And uh, it has a number of advantages. Uh, number one, you're not radioactive after the so procedure you is done. Your child or grandchild sitting or, or your dog, as the case may be. You know, there's no precautions. You don't have frequently, you know, with the permanent seeds, you have to strain your urine. One of the disadvantages of, of the seeds, in addition to being radioactive, is that, as I mentioned, it takes, if it's in, in the case of an iodine implant, the half life is two months, which means it takes over six months for 90% of the dose to be deposited. Well, you could do the most perfect implant anyone has ever seen, but what happens once those seeds are in there? You just stuck a bunch of needles in the prostate, you're depositing radiation, the prostate doesn't like that, it's gonna swell. So the geometry of your target over the course of those six months changes. The seeds can rotate, the seeds can migrate, they can pass into the urine, they can embolize. Sometimes, I, you know, you, the fir you, first thing you do after you do a permanent seed implant, you count, the, you do an x-ray, you count the seeds. Can't find, if the seed count doesn't match what you think you implanted, you search the room, make sure you didn't drop one. If you check the bottom of your shoes, everything else, you look all over the place. If you don't find it, what's the next thing you do? You send the patient for a chest x-ray because if it gets into the bloodstream, the seed can land in the lungs. So um, not that anybody's ever really necessarily been harmed by that, um, but it you know, can't be a good thing either, right? So um, it's, it's, there's some imprecision associated with the low dose rate that with the high dose rate you don't have, but you just have more control over the treatment that you're giving. Put your needles in, give the treatment, by the time the gland swells or anything else happens, which of course does, um, it's after the treatment's been done, it doesn't impact the quality of your radiation therapy. Mm -hmm.